What's up guys, welcome back to episode three of the off season series. We're gonna get straight into it. So first thing on the list is a quick workout and then I'll make some breakfast and then we're about to watch the Netherlands game. So let's get right into it. My body's pretty sore from the last couple of days. So I just need to roll out. Oh, get that tightness out. Pretty sore. The next exercise we're gonna do is one of my favorites. Uh, it's called a Paloff Press. Now I don't have a Kaiser machine at home, obviously, so the next best thing are just some resistance bands. So I just put a bunch of them together, and yeah, let's do a Paloff Press. I don't have that much weight at home to do the bench press. So I'm just gonna go for higher reps than I usually would, but yeah. Workout done, now we're about to make some breakfast. Game's about to start, so we gotta do this fast. Are you guys ready to see a quick trick shot? Oh my god, I, I saved it at the end though. That could have been a lot worse. Oh my god. One thing about me is I never give up, so you know. We're gonna give it another go. Bro, what I say? Perfecto, perfecto. So yeah, that is the finished product for breakfast. We got three breakfast sandwiches with avocado, bacon, and egg. And then we got an iced coffee and some kiwi. So yeah, so I'm about to eat this and then I'm gonna head upstairs and watch the Argentina game with my dad. So yeah, catch you guys soon. Hopefully Argentina can get the dub. And yeah, let's just enjoy the game. Está muy creído el portero, eh. Buah, qué golazo. Qué golazo. Las cosas que se tienen que decir cuando se cruzan, ¿no? Joder, va a cara de pena del holandés, ¿no? Buah. What a day for World Cup games. Uh, first game of the day was Brazil versus Croatia. Um, pretty intense. Kind of sad that um, Brazil's headed home, but you know, Croatia fought hard. And then the next game was even crazier. Um, Netherlands, Argentina. And I'm just happy that Argentina went through. I'm glad for Messi. And hopefully he can bring it home, but you know, now it's time to go put in the work, so I'm about to head to the field, get a little session in with myself, and yeah, see you guys at the field. Had a 
put on the Celta de Vigo top. Probably my favorite team in La Liga after Real Madrid. This next draw I'm about to do is for wingers and outside backs, just doing some finishing um, from out wide. And I got this drill from my bro, J Fit Training, or his YouTube channel is Jekis Atia, if I said that right. If I didn't, I'm sorry, but yeah, go check out his channel. He's got some dope stuff. And let's get right into the drill. Not a bad first rep. Almost got it on the top bins. Vamos. I'm pretty hyped with how much my weak foot has improved because I remember last year, like a year and a half ago, I could barely lift the ball off the ground. And like, yeah, it's not great, but we're getting there. Suave. We're about to play some pickup with some boys on the field that I just met. So let's see how it goes. We're about to play with the boys. Yeah. Shout yourself out. What's your Chase name? Wallman, Chase Whitney Wallman. High School. What's your IG tag? What's the IG tag? Don't got it, don't got it. <laughs> no <laughs> IG? <laughs> Anyone else want to say what's up? Hey, Diego Perez, Jesuit High School. What's that? Hey! hey. Big body. Oh, oh yeah! Oh, that's <laughs> 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 
So yeah, I just got back to the car. It's currently 5.30. It was pretty fun to play with those guys. Um, just have a little fun, do something a little competitive and just get some touches. Um, so yeah, if you guys are watching this video, it's nice meeting you guys. And now I'm about to head home, do some recovery, hit some Normatec, um, take a nice shower, and then we're gonna get to the good part. The reason you guys are watching this video, um, so I'm gonna give you guys six tips um, to play D1 soccer if that's something you're interested in. So stick around and I'll catch you guys when we get back home. Peace. So I just finished my protein shake. Um, the plan is to chill for a little bit, put the Normatex on, just relax, and then we'll get into the D1 segment. So we're now at the part you guys have all been waiting for. And I'm gonna give you guys five tips uh, that were crucial for me during the recruiting process and things that I think will be useful for you guys. Before I start off and before I say anything, I just wanna say that if any of you guys have any chance or any possibility um, of playing at the next level, whether it be D1, D2, D3, NAIA, JUCO, any level, just be grateful because only 7.9% of high school athletes end up playing at the college level. So if you get that chance, take it because there's so many other kids who would wanna be in your shoes and have that possibility. So just don't get fixated so much on the name. Don't get fixated on the division they're in. Just go to a school that you like, uh, where you like the coaching staff, and just go somewhere that you'll enjoy. Um, Cause at the end of the day, your friends, your family aren't the ones going there. And you're not gonna impress anyone by going to some big school. They'll forget about it in two days. So just go somewhere you enjoy, go somewhere you like, you know what I mean? Uh, just be open to different ideas. So tip number one, one of the most important things during the recruiting process, and I think if you're not doing this, it's gonna be, it's gonna make things 10 times harder. Um, and I think that is being at a good team. Uh, so that's one of my most important tips, being in the best team in your area, the most well-known team, because um, these teams are usually the ones that are most recognized by other college coaches, as those teams produced previous college players and are well-known in the area and stuff like that. Not only that, but these teams are the ones that are going to tournaments, showcases, and these are the places where you're gonna be seen by college coaches the most. So if you're not playing for one of those high level teams in your area and you're not going to the showcases, you're not going uh, tournaments, it's gonna be much harder for you to get seen and get noticed by these schools. So yeah, that's probably one of my most important things. And if for some reason you're not, you're not able to play um, on the best team in your, in your city for, for whatever reason, I don't know, um, or there's just not that good of, uh, of teams in your in your area. Another thing you could do is go to ID camps, but honestly, I wouldn't personally really recommend them because they're usually just a money grab uh, and coaches aren't really there to watch you or recruit you and they're just trying to get your money. So unless it's like a school that has directly told you to go there and are actually interested in you and know about you, um, then I wouldn't go um, unless they've told you, like I said. Um, because if not, it's just gonna be a scam. Uh, I've had a lot of friends that went to ID camps and um, those that did commit didn't really get anything out of those ID camps and they ended up committing to other schools because again, uh, those coaches weren't really looking for players at the time, they're just trying to get money. And now that brings me to tip number two and that is having a good highlight video. Um, and I know a lot of people have probably told you this and me personally, before when I didn't know how to edit, I used this editor called 24K Edit. So shout out to him. If you guys want to use him, I'll leave his Instagram link below. And yeah, he did some pretty good um, highlight videos for me for a good deal. So if you guys want to use him, just let him know that I sent you. And yeah, so there's four main points that you want to be hitting in your highlight videos to check off all these college coaches lists. And the first thing that a lot of people do wrong in their highlight videos is they make, they make their intro card really long. So that's where like you put your GPA, 
um, your name, your teams, your height and weight, stuff like that. Um, Cause if you're making it too long and you're putting a lot of unnecessary information that um, coaches will already see in your email, you're just gonna lose the coach's um, interest and attention span. Cause if you just bombard them with random stuff that they don't wanna see, they're just gonna click off their video um, or not even read it. So just keep it short. Um, just make the important information like your name, your height and weight, and then your GPA and maybe your team name and just make the intro five to 10 seconds max. And then tip number two of your highlight video is to have a lot of variation in your clips. Um, so don't put it, I personally wouldn't put it in segments like you're, you're straight defending, then you're attacking, then you're passing, um, and then set pieces. I would, I would have a variation throughout because the truth is college coaches aren't gonna watch your video for five to 10 minutes. Um, so having variation, so like starting off with a defensive clip if you're an outside back, then switching into a crossing clip, then maybe a good run, a goal, then back to defense. And just having variation in there makes the college coach a lot more intrigued and you show the coach what you can actually do in just a small span of time in like 30, 20 seconds, instead of them having to watch a minute and they still have only seen defending or just shooting and they don't know that you're a well-rounded player. And then another really important tip that a lot of people don't know how to do or just don't know they should do um, is like highlighting who you are on the field. Because if you just put a plain video, the coach is gonna be after scanning across the field, looking for who you are, who's on the ball, who, like, they won't really know who you are, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's 22 people on the field, um, and if you're not highlighted with a circle or a little arrow, whatever it is, the coaches are gonna have a hard time finding you. And again, like I was saying earlier in the last tip, um, coaches don't have a lot of time. Coaches aren't gonna spend that extra time looking for you. Um, so just make it easy for them. Just put a little circle, a little triangle. And if you don't know, reach out to a professional editor or um, like 24K edits or whoever it may be and have them put that in for you. And then tip number four, last one is two little tips for you guys. And that is make sure your quality is as best as possible on your video. Make sure it's not filmed on an Android or a crappy camera, make sure the quality is good so the coaches take you serious. And then the second part of that tip is, in your video, there's a lot of people who try to put um, cool songs in their videos with inappropriate lyrics and stuff. And the truth is that this is a big turnoff for coaches. Like, they don't need to be hearing Lil Baby or Bad Bunny. Uh, they're not gonna be impressed. You're not putting them on. Uh, just play a simple beat. Uh, without lyrics is better. Just simple and make sure the song isn't distracting and taking away from the from the video because what they're there to see is your soccer stuff. So yeah. So that's all the tips for the highlight video. And then the next tip, which is a really big one um, and one that I did a lot that I did a good job with, is being proactive and making sure I had a lot of options. Because during the college recruiting process, you'll come across a lot of coaches saying that they're interested in you, that they're gonna do this, they're gonna do that. And then things can fall out of place because you never know, maybe the coach is leaving, maybe they found a better player, maybe you weren't even their plan A or plan B or plan C to start with and they already are committed other players and they don't have enough spots. You just never know. So just reaching out to as many schools as possible, as many divisions as possible, and just having as many backup options as possible. Because I can't tell you how many times things fell through for me and I didn't know what to do, but thankfully I had other things going. I had other coaches I was emailing and I had backup plans. And if I wouldn't have had that, I probably wouldn't have committed anywhere. It's just important to be out there grinding um, your emails, your film, all that stuff, reaching out. And you should be the person doing this, not your mom, not your dad, not your coaches. Um, you should be the one interested playing at the next level. So just take initiative, be proactive, and get your name out there. Because if you're not willing to put it out there, then who will? Tip number four is also a crucial one, and that is be a good teammate and work really hard. Because these are things anyone can control. You don't have to be the best player to do these things. And it's something that college coaches really look for. Because uh, at the next level, the game is really physical, the game is really fast. And if you can't keep up with the physical demands, then coaches aren't going to want you. So again, just work hard, um, be strong on the ball, be fast. Um, and have a good fitness level. And then on the teammate side, always be encouraging your teammates. If you mess up, keep your head up, keep working hard, because you can't really have a good team with negative players and it's just gonna hurt the collective. So coaches are always looking for good people um, that will add to the chemistry of the team. So yeah, those two things that you can do um, and should be doing uh, no matter who you are. Uh, if you're trying to play at the next level, no matter the division, no matter the team, every coach is gonna be looking for that and you can control that, so do it. And then my tip number five is contacts. 
And what I mean by this is always stay in contact with your teammates, your past coaches and stuff like that. And just try to maintain a good relationship with everyone that you've played with, everyone you've played against with, because you never know um, where these people might end up in the future. Maybe they'll end up at Real Madrid, maybe they'll end up at Clemson. And having these connections and staying in contact with these people can help out a lot in the long run because everyone and most people have connections of football and if you don't have these connections then it's going to be hard for you to progress to the next level um, and that's just the truth of it. I know it might suck if you don't have contacts but you can always be networking whether it be through social media, uh, at tournaments, uh, wherever you go you can always meet new people who can help you get to the next level. Um, and then my bonus tip for you guys, tip number six, um, which is a little bonus tip for you guys, is just be nice to every coach um, who's recruiting you even if it's like a division or a team you don't want to play for, um, just be straightforward with the coach. Let them know your opinion. Let them know how you feel about playing for them. And if you don't want to play for them, just tell them. Um, be nice. Don't ghost them because everyone, all the coaches know each other. And coaches want a humble player, so make sure you're not being cocky, um, thinking you're better than, than anyone. So yeah, just be straightforward with coaches. Respond on time. Don't be ghosting people um, and let coaches know how you're feeling, whether you want to play for them, whether you don't want to play for them. And just be straightforward. You're not dating anyone. You're not trying to lead anyone on. Um, and coaches don't like this stuff. So just be straightforward. Trust me, it'll pay off in the long run. So those are my six tips if you want to play at the next level. And yeah, I honestly think they're they're super important. And it's what got me to the, to the level I'm at currently. Um, and if you have any questions, don't be afraid to leave a comment down below or DM me on Instagram. This is my IG. And yeah. Also, for any new viewers watching, I started a brand called MTF. It stands for More Than Footballers. And basically, I just want to create a community of people who love the game um, and have no limits on or off the field. And I just want to end the negativity and racism around the game and just build a positive community. So I'm going to be dropping these grip socks soon. Um... I'm currently working on the designs, just getting everything finalized, working on the packaging and just doing a bunch of stuff for you guys. So I'd really appreciate you guys' support. So drop a follow. And once I release the socks, I'll let you guys know. Appreciate it, guys.